Welcome back guys, this is your Maya Sensei speaking. Today we're going to start addressing the crease tool. I'm going to show you guys how we can make use of the crease tool to essentially add some supports around a certain model without the addition of adding extra edge loops or supporting edges to maintain that structure. So the crease tool is great because it uh, essentially allows us to maintain and hold a shape when the mesh is being smoothed or subdivided. Generally, when we're talking about smoothing and subdivision, we're actually referring to a model that is subdivision ready. In other words, if it's smoothing out, it will try and round out the subdivisions across the mesh uh, to essentially give it its the, the most smoothest curvature around the shape. So what I'm gonna do here, just to quickly demonstrate this, if I press three on the keyboard, you'll see a smooth preview version of, of a mesh. <clears throat> you'll, in fact, if, if I press one, that's your, your bounding box. Uh, two, it will show you both the bounding box and the smoother version. And then three will only show you the smooth version. So what I'm gonna do here, just before we jump into the actual crease tool, is we're gonna go to the attribute editor. I'm then gonna make sure I am on the mesh shape node itself and then under the smooth mesh drop down menu i'm going to make sure i turn on this display subdivisions what this allows us to do is actually preview the mesh at a certain resolution of subdivisions so as if we're actually applying a mesh smooth function so this is just a quick uh, viewport preview it doesn't actually add those polygons it kind of does it behind the scenes for us um, however, if you do push this too high, it might start lagging. And so just be aware of that. So now that I have it set to about two levels of subdivision, I want to show you guys that we can then go and let's say we want to maintain that inner structure of this edge loop that we have there. <clears throat> and that means going all the way around uh, this loop section. Let's quickly select all of those. And then when I press three, you can see those edges are still selected, but I want to keep those shapes much sharper. So this is where the crease tool comes uh, in quite handy. So I'm going to jump in uh, into the mesh menu. You can see it's a tear off of this window just by clicking this button. You can go to the crease tool and then with the crease tool selected, all you have to do is middle mouse click and drag. So what this does, it's now forcing the polygons to go back to that original shape that we had when we did the um, the low poly mesh. So that's where it is in the low poly mesh when I press one, and this is where it is now in uh, smooth preview mode. So that shows you that we can maintain that structure quite nice and sharp. And so I'm gonna just rinse and repeat the same technique for the edge loop just above that. I'm gonna hold it on uh, shift to show you another way of accessing it. We can go to crease tool. And then again, with those components selected, we can do a middle mouse click and drag. And then if I press three again, you can actually see the visual representation of how sharp it's making that shape. So I wanna give you guys some extra information that is worth mentioning, especially when we start working with things like ZBrush, uh, applications where it supports the smoothing or multiple subdivisions of a mesh. So if you guys look down here in the tooltip window, when I have this tool active, it's, and I start middle mouse clicking and dragging, you'll see there's two things occurring. It says crease value, and then depending on the slider percentage, and then it has a maximum number, which is currently set to two. So what is this? What does that refer to? Well, essentially it means that a mesh uh, will, res uh, will, at least the crease tool will respect the number of subdivisions up to that specific number. And then after that, it will start rounding out the shape. So at the moment we're currently previewing the mesh as if it is already at subdivision of two. I'm gonna push that all the way to the maximum number of um, you know, something like 10 or so as a value just so we can have a really sharp transition. And if you look at the subdivision preview, we can push this up 
a little bit further, like two or three. In fact, we can actually use the page up and page down to cycle between those subdivisions. So what this is doing now, it's adding those additional polygons and it's gonna try and maintain that shape for as long as possible. And then if it exceeds the number of the, the crease value that we see down here below, it just means that it's now going to respect that and always maintain that sharpness up to that particular level. <clears throat> so this is great for ZBrush because we can actually make use of exactly the same tools within ZBrush that uh, supports the, the creasing. So you would export the model as an OBJ or as a Maya ASCII, and then the creasing sets of, of um, the selected edges will then be the same as the creasing tools inside of ZBrush. So this is what I like to use to just add a little bit of an extra you know, maintenance or structural support that will keep the mesh from collapsing, um, or preventing it at least from collapsing in on itself and giving us quite nice looking results. I'm just gonna go make sure we've got all those back edges selected. I wanna go super sharp, just wanna have a slight transition value there with just enough softness and then we can see this mesh is looking pretty nice and clean so that's basically what the crease tool does in a nutshell you can go and crease single components so i just want to show you guys on a flat polygon plane so i'm going to draw out a polygon plane over here and let's give it a an edge extrude bring that up another extrude going across and then we have the, the, let's say this edge over here selected. You can press three to preview your smooth and you can turn on display subdivision so you can actually see the internal uh, subdivisions for that mesh. And then if we apply the crease to, a, to the edges, it will respect that. But we can also apply the same thing to vertices. So we can grab a single vertex for instance and then we can do a crease and we'll also do the same thing by trying to transition to it from a sharp to a smooth curvature. So that is basically it. That's how the crease tool works. There is very little amount of options inside of it. <clears throat> Again, we have a mode where we can choose absolute or relative. And if you go and look in the tooltips, basically what this means is when it's set to absolute, it will respect the creasing for the edges and vertices uh, and maintain the same amount of creasing applied to all the edges, regardless of the edge length and their corresponding connected vertices around that section. And if you use relative, it just means now each vertex or each edge would be considered as an, its, its own kind of calculation for the edge length and how close they are to other um, comparison edges or you know, connected edges. And then from there, um, change the way that the crease gets applied to it. So those are quite interesting options. It's worth checking out both of these. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it for now. Um, I would like to, to ask you guys, if you like these videos, please make sure you subscribe and um, click on the bell button so that you can get notifications as soon as I release a new video. I'm trying to release a video, uh, at least two or three videos a week. And um, so yeah, if they help you guys, please share with everyone who you think that might find this useful. And, um, you know, comment below if you have any questions or if you guys have any specific requests for specific videos, I would really like to know and hear from you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.